Alright, what's up guys? It's Pixelated Apollo. Thanks for stopping by and we are back again with Third Age Total War. This is another custom scenario made by Sin of the Dark Cloud and this one's pretty freaking cool. I've never seen a map like this so this is completely unique to me. I'm really excited to see how this battle is going to turn out. Now I don't know if this is a historical battle. I'm pretty sure it's a made up battle but it's it's believable, you know, like I could see this happening. So basically we are at the Blue Mountains and more specifically this is Mount Graham, which is a bit of a safe haven for dwarves. You know, whenever they lose their original homes, they'll migrate to Mount Graham and just live out their lives. Well, unfortunately for the dwarves, Mount Graham is located near Angmar, which, you know, who lives there, the Witch King. And at this time, the Witch King is not super powerful, but over time, he's causing nearby clans and kingdoms to bend the knee to the Witch King. And eventually, he does get to this stronghold, this dwarven stronghold, and he sieges it. Now, his first siege is a complete failure because he completely underestimated the dwarves. They had a very strong defense over here. Uh, this mountain here is very easy to defend, but you know, the Witch King, he's very persistent. You gotta give him that, you know, that's one good good quality about the guy or Wraith or whatever you wanna call him. Uh, but yeah, he comes back with a much larger army and he also spent a lot of years tunneling through the mountain so he can attack from different points. So you can see we got some baddies in the back of this fortress. And just look at this fort. Look at this. Look at the skyline, right? That is so awesome. That looks really, really cool. So uh, I'm going to real quick show you around. By the way, the year is about third age 1300. So it's pretty early third age. Uh, but let me just show you around the, the, uh, the map here. You can see it's pretty dynamic. There's a lot of different pathways that you can take. And look at this one right here. This is going to be a really important one. You can see the orcs. They can go up this ramp. Come up this way and then, oh, sorry guys, and then turn this way and get a very good point of view to the town center. So they've got to capture this. So it should be interesting how they attack, how they approach this. And it's also going to be really interesting what the dwarves give up. You know, what are they going to hold? What are they going to just abandon? And what are they going to fight for? So it's going to be a great battle, guys. So let's go ahead and look at the army comps. We're going to go super fast. This is a really long battle, so be sure to get your snacks and drinks. You will need them. Just, you know, make sure you don't eat them right away. Like in five minutes, you got to, you know, enjoy your food. Enjoy the battle. Anyway, all right, let's look at the army comps. This is a three versus two. Three attackers, two defenders. We have the Orcs of the Misty Mountains, commanded by Glowbox. He's got most of his army located right here, but he also has um, some forces uh, flanking around so you can see there's a small like tunnel over here with more of its troops the next army is uh, the orcs of Gundabad commanded by Kuru Guru Chan he he's same thing over here he's got some trolls and some orc halberdiers and uh, more trolls over this way but again his his main army is located at the front gate with more orc halberds orcs you know orcs and trolls i mean you guys know what to expect from these armies and then we have mordor uh, commanded by sin of the dark cloud the creator of this uh, this battle uh, now i i imagine that mordor is representing angmar so mordor has some uruk some uruk halberds and some black numenorians and uh, just a solid mix. I mean, it's probably the best army here, like skill-wise. And then back here, we also have more Mordor forces attacking the flank. So lots of catapults, I noticed, which is going to be key. So let's look at the defenders. Uh, so the Dwarven defenders, one is commanded by Miles and Davis, and his job is to focus on this main defense right here. So he's got most of his forces concentrated over here. His army is consisting of a, a mix of different dwarves, uh, Iron Guard, Iron Crossbowmen. He's got the Axemen of Erebor, some uh, Vault Wardens, and uh, Guards of Kaza, or yeah, Kaza Doom. So it's going to be a pretty solid force. Now Paladin Bob, his force is a bit scattered scattered everywhere, but this is the main force. So yeah, Paladin Bob leading this force. He's got Iron Guard, a catapult, seeing lots and lots of catapults, guards of Kaza Doom, Dragon Slayers, which is great to see on the battlefield, Iron Crossbowmen. Crossbows are going to be key in this defense. He also has, um, he has some troops over here defending this area. Uh, for whatever reason, this area 
reminds me of Star Wars. I don't know why. I'm not going to explain why. I'm just going to leave that out there and you guys can come to your own conclusions. But yeah, that's that's his army. And we can go to normal speed and start this battle. Uh, again, I have no idea like how quick this battle is going to start. Uh, it is a very long one. So we're going to actually fast forward a little bit. Check out the troop movement though. Check out that mini map. That will give you a good idea of where the action is going on. And we can see that, yes, the orcs are headed up this way. They are going up this very uh, sneaky path. The dwarves are going to hold their ground at this very cool looking defense. These like arrow towers here in these two mounds should be able to hold for quite some time. And they're also moving up the catapult here, which I think is going to be very important to their uh, defense. But you got to make sure you use the catapult ammo the best you can. You know, you don't want to waste it on enemies that are super far away in loose formation. Wait until they really clump up and then use that catapult. But we also have the attacking catapult. We have Gundabad from Kuru Guru Chan moving up. And he's gonna go ahead and fire. Oh, I'm so sorry, guys. All right, I just realized, I just realized that this map was made by Kuru Guru Chan. So I am so sorry, uh, Kuru. You, uh, you are the creator of this mod, so I will be sure to write an annotation or something like that. Uh, but yeah, Kuru, Kuru made this one. Alright, so good hit there on the dwarves, and a great bombardment has begun. We can see back here on the map, oh, we're gonna have some battles against the, uh, the camera here. Against the layout, it's very buggy whenever you have these, like, giant, giant holes in the map. Uh, but yeah, M Mordor marching over this way, I think they're gonna easily take this. I think the dwarves are giving up on this position. Again, I mean, you can't defend everything, because if you defend everything, you defend nothing. That's that's today's philosophy, which I've said that before, but I'll use it again All right, so more artillery fire coming into the dwarven position. It looks like yes, they are taking out this catapult I think the dwarves should just fall back save this catapult Don't use it just yet because he's not gonna get a lot of kills. Uh, he might be able to take out This enemy catapult, but I don't know. Is it gonna be worth it? I don't know. We'll see and then oh We got some archers up here on this mound Getting some good shots here. Looks like they're going after some crossbows that are up on this position. So just like that, when you thought the dwarves had the you know the upper hand, the higher ground, that's not the case. Uh, because this position right here is making it really easy for the attackers to put some good flanking fire on those dwarves. So the dwarves are falling back, and I think he's doing a mass retreat to the walls. So he's not even going to put up a stand right here. Which is very unfortunate, but if I was Mordor, if I was the attackers, I'd be moving in. I would attack as quick as possible and try to take out that catapult. Because that catapult is going to be really slow getting back into the defend uh, the defenses. So hopefully, uh, hopefully they can uh, catch up to it, take it out. Uh, let's see what else is going on around the battlefield. You can see that more orc armies moving forward, pushing up those catapults, which is going to be really key to their assault. Got a lot of troops pouring down this, uh, this mountain valley. And then over here, we've got more dwarves kind of falling back. Uh, seems like they're all just going to fall back to the uh, the main defense here. Now, Miles and Davis, he's got troops over here, which he could send up here to stop that orc advance. But they better hurry up because we got some goblin heavy infantry eager to take control of this pathway because it's going to be so important to their attack. Uh, let's see what's going on here. All right, so yeah, they're moving up some Snaga archers. So I'm kind of glad I'm fast forwarding through this and at a decent speed. Oh, we're getting some good shots over here though. Fantastic. Uh, I'm glad I'm fast forwarding though because there's not like a ton of intense action. It's a lot of mind games so far in this battle. Uh, but the dwarves, oh, that was a weird looking artillery shot. Just barely getting over. And look at that volley coming into the iron crossbowmen. They are just no match to the numbers. Uh, they're definitely better archers or crossbowmen compared to the enemy skirmishers. But just because of the number of archers the attackers have, these dwarves do not stand a chance. And maybe he's using them as a sacrifice unit. I'm not really sure. We've got more crossbows moving up here. And I think he's going to take on some of these orcs here. I think he's going to take on the heavy goblin archers. Now that they're off that hill, uh, we're going to go ahead and do normal speed now. Because I think we're, we're about to have some pretty intense fighting over here. Some iron guard led by Paladin Bob moving over through this way. He's Oh, he's going to go for the troll catapult. 
I mean, could you imagine? Okay, so you are an iron guard, and you have been assigned to take out a catapult. But this is no just orc catapult. This is a troll catapult, so that's gonna be pretty terrifying. Even though you you know you at first you're like, oh, iron guarded. I need you guys to take out a catapult. Like, oh, easy job. Catapult crew's pretty easy to kill. Oh, it's a troll catapult. Then your your heart just sinks and and they're gonna try to uh, fall back here. But here comes the dwarves, angry, charging in. Uh, we do have some infantry trying to get into the front lines to protect their catapult. It's good to see that they are trying to protect their catapult. And now the dwarves, I think they're going to go ahead and clash with the enemy. And this is going to be our first infantry charge here. They're now forming in shield wall, but we might have some fighting going on in the outer wall as, as well. Uh, so here we go. The fight has begun. Excellent, excellent. The dwarves are going to try to fight their way through this orc horde to get to that catapult and try to save a lot of lives of the dwarves, you know, by taking out that catapult. Uh, let's move back to the front line here, see what's going on. We do, okay, we do have some crossbows actually holding back the line and some dwarves who are back in the fight. Look at this. I don't know why he's back over here. Maybe he couldn't save the catapult and he's going to make a stand for it. I'm not sure what's going on. I know Miles N. Davis, he's a pretty experienced player, so he might be dealing with some pathfinding issues or maybe he wants to put up a stand here because he sees an opportunity of clumped up orcs. So this is a really good target. So that's that that might be, you know, what they're going for. <laughs> Words are hard. But the orcs taking advantage of the situation here, trying to move in better positions, moving up their archers to get in better positions and fire down at the defending dwarves. If you are the dwarves, you just got to move in your infantry. Oh, here we go. Here we go. They're loading up the catapult. This is where things are going to get pretty juicy. Let's see what happens here. All right, here we go. Come on, dwarves. You can do this. Come on, fire before this flanking force comes up. Oh, my God. Are they going to fire or what? All right, looks like they're having some issues with the catapult. There we go. There we go. Oh, they're actually changing targets, and they miss. It goes right over the heads. Uh, but the orc catapult gets a direct hit on the dwarven position. And that is not a good start. That is not the kind of start the dwarves need in this battle. And so far, I'm going to have to give this... Th so far, I think the orcs are winning this. I mean, everything they've done seems to be winning. Uh, but we do have some fighting going on at the flank. Remember, this is the very strategic position uh, that the, the dwarves need to retake. But we have some cave trolls charging down here, which uh, in a river or ocean of iron guard. So this is going to be a tough fight for the orcs. Because these Iron Guard are so good at fighting. But hopefully with the trolls in the fight, they can turn this one around. Uh, they definitely need to send up more reinforcements, though. There's no way they're going to be able to take on. And I see some Axemen of Erebor in the mix. So that's going to really help them out there in the fight. All right, let's see what's going on in other parts of the battle here. So we got that. I mean, this battle is all over the place. You can see here that the Orcs are trying to sneak their way through these pikemen. And unfortunately... Their commitment to defend this opening here was a bad idea. The pikemen are just getting shot down by archers. I mean, look at this hill position right here. This is just, this is disgusting. I mean, this is gross. <laughs> this is really bad for the defenders. And they are just getting ripped apart from those archers. Do we have a fight going on over here? Looks like we had somewhat of a fight. I think some crossbows getting caught out there, getting chopped down. A lot of dead trolls, though. And look at the blood just spray everywhere in this fight. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Just the archers shredding their forces. And look at this crafty Gundabad going around. You definitely got to be crafty with Gundabad. They're one of the weaker factions. But he's going to be able to flank around these pikemen. And now the catapult is going to be lost. There's no way they can defend against this horde. And it's going to be a tough fight for them for here on out. Losing key elements to their defense. It just, oh man, I love just seeing that volley come in. It's fantastic. Look at that. Oh my god, that is disgusting. Even though they're Snaga archers, there's just so many of them. And they, the, the fire, the rate of fire is so fast. So they're just racking up, doing a lot of damage. They might, you know, every volley might not be killing a lot of the dwarves. But it's certainly weakening them. And they're going to easily take out this outer defense. 
Great battle so far. Fantastic. All right, let's see how the fight's going on over this very strategic pathway over here. It looks like the dwarves are victorious. No surprise there. They did not send up more reinforcements. It looks like they do have more troops here. Some heavy archers. But I think what the dwarves need to, need to do is they need to commit some forces over in this opening here. Just just have some reserves over here and make it so the uh, the bad guys can't set up their archers on this, this big platform and fire down at the defenders. Uh, we do have some fighting going on here. We actually have a very crafty defense or stand right here by Sin of the Dark Cloud doing a lot of damage to those iron crossbowmen. And we have some infantry coming down. So Paladin Bob, it looks like he's kind of stuck over here. I think he was trying to get to the town center or that castle defense in this great mountain fortress. Uh, but the but Morador's forces are going to cut them off. So they're, they're getting attacked, I think, on multiple fronts here. Yes, they are. And look at this. A great charge from the Axemen of Erebor charging into some archers. They're going to try to get them here. You know, dwarves are a bit slow. You know, well, actually, they're natural sprinter, sprinters, but uh, we'll see. It looks like they are. They're going to catch up to those those archers. They definitely need to send up some infantry. Uh, it's going to be, you know, one challenging thing for the attackers is that they are going to have to... Oh, they're going to have to micro many different spots of the battle because they're attacking on many different uh, flanks. So that's one thing the defenders should try to take advantage of is just trying to out-micro uh, their, their opponents. Look at these archers. Such a great position for these archers. Oh, great hit with the catapult. Almost taking out one of the dwarven catapults. And this is their last catapult. I'm, I'm pretty sure this is their last catapult. Yeah, he's getting it out of there. And the dwarves are falling back. He's giving up on this fight. Uh, I think there is another pathway. Yes, there is. So he can still get inside this fortress. He's not completely blocked off. So, But he's going to fall back over to this very strategic position here. Which is going to... Oh, wait. They do have another catapult. So that is good. But uh, they're, they're going to put up a nice defense here. They've got a good position with the dragon slayers. Uh, iron crossbowmen. Should be able to hold the outer, uh, outer walls of that castle in there. Uh, but what a crazy map. Absolutely crazy. And still the dwarves are feeling the wrath of those archers and the catapult up there. Another good volley there. See, I think they're going to hold... No, they're going to fire this catapult once again. Let's see how this goes. Oh, it's a juicy target. It's a lot of dwarves. No, it looks like it's going to miss, but here comes another one. Here comes another one. Oh, just nearly hitting the mountain there, but it goes a little too far. It misses the target. We also have some dwarven artillery firing at these Uruks. So, a great artillery battle going on in this part of the fight. So, these... Guards of Khazad Doom, they are going to retreat back. They're taking too much arrow fire here. So, yeah, they are definitely falling back here. He needs to make a decision quickly. He might need to send up more archers to the fight to try to hold back those Uruks. Who knows what they're going to do here. They are taking a lot of suppressing fire, that is for sure. So there's a mass retreat from the dwarves. Let's go back to the front gate here. Looks like they're cleaning up the mess. Uh, amazingly enough, the dwarves are still holding on over here, which is kind of crazy. Uh, but there's some snow trolls trying to clean up this mess, and I think this is going to be it for the Iron Guard. And look at them, they're just covered in blood. Which is just disgusting, taking so much firepower from those archers. But amazingly enough, I mean, those archers are pretty bad. So maybe I was kind of overestimating them. I think they probably wasted a lot of ammo trying to kill one unit of Iron Guard. So I don't really think the orcs have that much more ammo. I could be wrong. I could be mistaken. But it seems like he's got his archers in melee. So yeah, I'm pretty sure they used up all their ammo on one iron guard and they didn't even completely kill it which is kind of crazy 
Alright, let's see what's going on on the other, uh, other side here. More dwarves just kind of grouping up together. I really hope the dwarves don't- Oh, look at this! It's like he's reading my mind. We have dwarves holding back in reserve, just making sure the orcs don't actually use this. And if they do send up troops this way, then they're gonna have to send a lot to take this, because this is such a key point to this battle, and they cannot give it up. Uh, but you can see here, there's more and more orcs forming in this, uh, this great fortress in the mountain. So fantastic, fantastic job there. Paladin Bob, I think he's being pretty wise in this situation. He realizes that, oh, ho, ho, getting hit with artillery. But yeah, he realizes that he can't necessarily um, hold off against all those archers. So he's kind of using this mountain cliff to, to protect his troops. Uh, but we do have a lot of, uh, oh, sorry guys. We do have a lot of crossbows getting into position here. Gonna fire back. Here comes the first volley of the Uruks after repositioning. So we're gonna have a pretty intense skirmish on this side. And uh, let's see what's going on. The orcs have pretty much claimed this, this defense here. I mean, the Iron Guard, amazingly enough, they're still fighting. But eventually they're gonna break through here. And I think we're gonna be able to go times two speed here. Again, for time's sake, I think we're just having a big skirmish. And the dwarves are very eager to defend this opening here. So they're gonna set up their defenses. And that should be a pretty tough approach for the, uh, the orcs. But again, so far, I think the orcs are doing an excellent job. Uh, but really, it's about the late game. Because Paladin Bob, he's being really smart with his reserves. He's getting them back in the fortress. And I think they're gonna put up one hell of a last stand. So we'll see what happens here. But again, let's just kind of look around the battlefield. See what's going on. Uh, we do have some baddies up here, some Mordor forces, which they could use this cliff as well. So, unfortunately, they lost another strategic position. Not much they could have done about it. I think Mordor just beat them to the punch, and they got into this area before the dwarves. So now they're going to be able to set up some archers and fire down at the defenders. But how much ammo do they have? And again, these dwarves, they're, <laughs> they're heavily armored. They're skilled at doing armor stuff. So, you know, they can take... A lot of archer fire. We saw that at the uh, the open gate over here. Uh, let me show you. Uh, with the iron guard who just now died. But they took like at least a thousand arrows in the back. And they're still, they were still going strong. So they can absorb that archer fire. So I don't think that's going to be a huge problem. And now the goblins, or yeah, the orcs of Gundabad, whatever, goblins, orcs. They are pushing towards this main gate. And they're going to get ready their push. We do have some iron crossbowmen defending this area. Definitely think he should get these crossbows up on these walls. Because you can't destroy this with a catapult. So it's going to be pretty easy for them to get up there and just fire down at the enemy without worrying about losing troops to artillery fire. Uh, let's see what's going on back over here. More just skirmishing. And look at this. They kind of gave up on that skirmish. So I think this is a great point to uh, cut it out. Alright, so after a very short cut there, just, you know, just cutting out some skirmishing here and there, some troop movement. Let me just go ahead and show you what's going on here. So the skirmishing's still going on here. We do have a bit of an artil artillery battle, and it looks like they took out one of the dwarven artillery, uh, or, or one of the catapults. And uh, they're going to continue on to try to kill each other. It's a very epic standoff here. I mean, both armies, they don't want to get too aggressive. I mean, really, it's up to Mordor to push forward. So there's no reason for the dwarves to, you know, be super aggressive and lose all their troops. Because they have, they have the high ground over there. Mordor has the high ground. And uh, the dwarves, if they stay where they are, they're going to have the very strategic defense. Uh, but they are losing a lot of troops to uh, archer or catapult fire. And we can see here that there's going to be an epic showdown over at this opening here. We've got some heavy goblin archers forming up on this uh, this slope. Going to be able to fire down at some dwarven reinforcements. So Paladin Bob, he sent up some of his dwarves to try to support this uh, very important position. Again, this I cannot stress this enough. This is a very, very important position for the dwarves, and they cannot lose it. And we can see here that the goblins are pushing up more and more troops. Over at the main gate, you can see that they're preparing for their massive invasion. Uh, their ram was, well, I guess the ram wasn't good enough, and now they're using their catapult to knock down this gate. You can see the crossbows are now up on the walls, firing down. Oh, look at that. Direct, nice angle to the enemy, getting tons of kills. Trying to take out that catapult. He is using his uh, archers that used up their ammo as a meat shield to try to protect them from that fire. 
Oh yeah, fantastic job here. So now they're gonna push in, and this is it. This is this is a very critical moment in this siege battle, and I'm actually really surprised that the dwarves are not sending up more infantry over to this area. They're just gonna let them take this gate, it seems like. I mean, he's got pikemen in reserve over here, but they're out of position. He needs to push them up. He might be just trying to use this the, the choke point right here, uh, near the, uh, the arches here. But he's going to give up this position with the, the crossbows, which I think is huge. Because now the enemy is going to be able to flank around and kill these crossbows. Which uh, is going to it's gonna save a lot of orc lives. Uh, so that's, that's always good for the attackers if you're rooting for the orcs. You know, which I feel like in most cases, people root for the defenders. Especially when they're the dwarves. Because whenever the defenders lose, I hear it all the time. I hear it all the time where people go, the defenders always lose. It's not true. If you watch my videos, there's tons of times where defenders win. So maybe you just haven't been watching all my videos. So think about that. So think about that. Uh, but yeah, the skirmish is still going on over here. And uh, the, the dwarven reserve still waiting, waiting for the epic clash. Uh, the troops are going to continue to run in here. I think we're going to have an infantry charge here, but the dwarves don't seem to be paying attention. They're not even going to move up their uh, vault wardens to defend this area. They've got gaps in their defense. They can easily flank around, and they can easily push for this town center and just take the victory through conquering the town center. I do believe we're going to have a bit of a standoff over here. We actually already do have a standoff here where the dwarves are going to try to muscle their way through this defense. Yes, the orcs... The goblins holding back a pretty large amount of dwarves here. The archers just spraying down their orc arrows. And we also have a catapult in position, which should do a lot of damage here. But they're definitely going to need more infantry to hold back that dwar dwarven force. I'm kind of surprised that they're not sending more troops over up this area. Uh, we'll see what happens here. But the dwarves are actually charging in with their reserves. Miles and Davis charging in his axemen to take out this position. There we go. Fantastic. Excellent charge there. And here comes more Axemen of Erebor. Supporting their... Their infantry. Here comes more arrows. I love seeing that. The dwarves are actually taking somewhat of a beating. And we have the general actually moving in. So he's going to use his general as an infantry force to hold back this dwarven in flank. Uh, but is it going to be enough? I don't know. I mean, there's still a lot of dwarves left. It's actually pretty close, but these dwarves are tough to kill, so it's going to be a hard task for these goblins. And the archers are falling back a little bit here. The catapult is falling back. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Here comes the mighty dwarves. They're going to break through this orc defense. They're just, yeah, they're just running through this defense, and they're going to take out this catapult, and this is going to be a huge, huge win for the defenders, and this is exactly what they need to turn this battle around. Uh, so this is a huge loss for the def uh, the attackers, obviously. But he's trying to defend this catapult, but it's not going to pay off. And uh, I'm sure uh, the even if the dwarves don't win here, they are going to win on this flank and be able to break through the forces. Uh, they need more goblin support. We do have some infantry coming down. This is pretty epic. Seeing the march in column formation. They need to move quickly though or they're going to lose their advantage. They're going to lose that position. Uh, but yeah, we got some special abilities going on here. The dwarves are going on a rampage. Let's see what's going on in the inner castle though. We can see that there's a bit of a fight here. Uh, I think the, the orcs are taking a slow approach, which is really interesting. They're not going to attack, you know, just storm in full force. Which I think they should do, uh, because, well, actually, hold on here. Miles and Davis setting up some guards of cause of doom. Yeah, I think they should attack full force here before they can set up a proper defense and put a lot of pressure on this flank, because Paladin Bob, I mean, look at this army waiting for Mordor. So if Paladin Bob, if that can get him to send over more forces to help the other flank, that's going to really open it up for Mordor. And there goes one of the generals slain by the Iron Guard with some very interesting sound effects. I don't know what that was about. Oh, come on, camera. Come on, you're killing me here. So yeah, yeah, they killed the general right over here. And the dwarves are just cutting through these forces. 
The reinforcements are way too late. We do have some archers firing down this way. Low box trying to use his archers. Uh, but the dwarves are not going to stop here. They're going to keep pushing, keep taking out these orcs, and make sure they never come back to this area. Yeah, the dwarves are going to win over here too. They're going to cut down these archers like a hot, hot knife through butter. Got to say it every time. Every time. And here comes the pikemen putting down their pikes. Now fighting off this orc invasion on this side. Uh, but they need to make sure they use every single choke point here. They don't want to spam the troops in one area. And they need to send up more, more infantry that way. As you can tell, they have a pretty massive amount of infantry headed down this pathway. And they're going to be able to uh, put a lot of pressure on this front. Uh, but so far, you know, honestly, I think the doors are doing pretty well. I think they're turning this one around. I think the balance of power, uh, if we look at percentage killed, it's even. Which is not necessarily good when you're defending, but I don't know. I, I feel like what the dwarves have left is their best army, you know, like the best of their troops. So I feel like they can turn this one around. But this great skirmish continues on over here, and the dwarves just being so patient. Look at the size. Oh, wait, we got some fighting going on here. I completely missed this. All right, so we got some dragon slayers. Uh, attacking this front. We have a small flanking force here from the Orcs of Gundabad holding back some trolls keeping them behind this mountain wall here from enemy archer fire and we have some Paradrum firing down on this dwarven position. So Palin and Bob defending multiple fronts right now but I don't think the Orcs are going to have enough infantry to take this one. Mordor definitely needs to move in and support Gundabad on that front, uh, which I believe Mordor is moving in with their halberds here. So I think they're going to be attacking on multiple fronts now, and this is probably going to be the final assault. This is uh, this is for all the marbles right here. Do the attackers have enough to take out this defense, or are they going to be shut down by the dwarves? Will the Witch King take it? All right, come on. We need more troops running through this way. It's got to spread out the forces. We have trolls. No, oh my god. The crossbows are still alive. And the trolls using their great clubs to, to smash the skulls of the uh, dwarves here. is poor dwarves. No match. No match whatsoever. So that should finally clean, clean up the dwarves on this wall. And they can continue to charge in without worrying about the, that uh, crossbow fire. Alright, let's see. Let's go back over to the other fronts here where Mordor was moving in. They're taking a lot of fire right here, but they are now in melee against some dwarven crossbows. I think Paladin and Bob using them as a sacrifice unit so he can continue to fire his uh, his ammo into this big blob. We've got more and more forces charging into the secondary lines. And uh, we have some iron guard waiting in reserve in loose formation. Look at those orc arrows come in. Gonna need a lot more, though, to take out these dwarves. Alright, let's see what's going on in this side as well. The, the dwarven, or the, the dragon slayers and shield wall holding back this pretty large force here. And I think they can hold all day. I mean, orcs are just so bad. Uh, but they are moving up the catapult here. I think he realizes that he needs to send up more support. Needs to send up more, uh, more you know, skirmishing support. Here comes some halberds, which actually might help out in this situation. And uh, let's see what's going on on this side as well. There's a bit of a fight. Oh my god, I'm so sorry about the camera. There's a bit of a fight over here. Uh, we have some archers just... I don't know what they're firing. Are they firing at uh, this iron guard unit? It looks like they're trying to hide behind some rocks, which I'm pretty sure the arrows can go through. Uh, maybe he's just getting them to waste their ammo because the Iron Guard, I mean, they're so heavily armored that they can they can withstand. I mean, look at this. They, they're down to 93. Let's see if they lose any troops in the next volley. So 93, here we go. Nothing. Nothing. So they're absorbing all that ammo 
that's pretty clever that's pretty cheeky there from uh, Paladin and Bob he also has some Dragon Slayers in reserve over here let's just look at the battlefield on this side and the Dwarves are gonna be able to hold this area in fact I think they could even send more reinforcements to other parts of the battle because they're not gonna be needed on that side uh, but here we go guys Uru Cowbirds moving in we got the arrows coming down and this is gonna be it we got shield wall from the Iron Guard and finally the infantry from Mordor they're gonna push in here and the great assault is finally finally happening here for this oh oh there's an opening here look at this there's an opening in the dwarven defense so these Uru cowbirds are gonna get to the back lines but they're gonna need more support because these troops are shaken but they're not stirred but they could be stirred any moment now and break off the battlefield and here comes some axemen of Erebor trying to close the gaps fill in that hole nice giggity and then uh, some trolls over here who are just uh, doing some damage against the dwarves. Dwarves have now sent in their axemen to try to take care of these, uh, these trolls. So it's going to be a pretty tough fight. But you can see here that the orcs are just full on attacking, bringing everything to the fight. Here comes more dwarves moving in. And loose formation because they are taking a lot of archer fire uh, but it's nice to see that he's got some reinforcements ready to go and the trolls are actually moving into the back lines against the dragon slayers and we are like barely over halfway through this battle which is kind of insane so the dwarves taking on some nasty uruks over here the lead to infantry of Mordor. And here comes more forces. We got a catapult being pushed forward. The archers are still putting down suppressing fire. We have some Olag High. They're going to be joining the fight. So these trolls are going to be key to taking out this dwarven defense. They are going to be needed. They are going to be needed. And the Iron Guard actually moving in. And they're down to 91. <laughs> like what? They lost two guys. Two guys since we last saw them. And they're going to be taking on the uh, the Goblin Halberd here. That is crazy. Did they even lose any dwarves? They lost like five dwarves over here. Three dwarves standing over there. Maybe a little bit more. But uh, that's insane. Uh, but yeah, I would get these guys moving. I don't think these reserves need to stay over here. Get them in the fight. Let's see. Let's go back over here. But the dwarves are pushing back the attackers. And this battle is turning in favor of the dwarves. Just like that, I think it was very wise for them to fall back and uh, use their more, or fall back and defend less, where they can really concentrate their forces against this massive orc invasion. The catapult back here, getting ready to fire. There's a pretty big opening here. Maybe there's too many friendlies in the way. A lot of uh, great supporting arrow fire, but again, those are the guards of Khazad Doom, so they can withstand a lot of archer fire. But it's better than nothing. All right, let's see what's going on in other parts of the battlefield. Uh, this is where the great, I mean, look at this push over here. There's now orcs all over the place, and the dwarves are hanging on for dear life. We do have a catapult firing as well. And look at this, a massive gap in the defense. And they're now going to be able to surround these dwarves. And the dwarves are going to have to fight their way through this. And uh, let's see, yeah, they are falling back here. Uh, but most of the uh, attacking forces have been destroyed. So, well, I guess they could fall back this way. So they're not exactly surrounded. There is a way to get out. Oh, so, oh, great shot in the general's bodyguard. Fantastic. Oh, no. Some friendly fire though, ripping through so many dwarves. We got some crazy artillery going on right here. This is definitely the uh, the climax of the battle, like, so to speak, giggity. But uh, yeah, this is gonna be pretty intense. And here comes the Black Numenorians pushing their way through with their very skilled Black Numenorians. Very awesome. And the dwarves are trying to turn around, come back and support their front line. But Mordor is here to stay. Mordor is ripping through their defense, and I'm quite surprised. Honestly, I thought the dwarves were going to be able to take this one easily. You know, they're going to be able to hold easily, but 
I feel like Paladin Bob, maybe he was focused on other parts of the battle. Not really sure, but I think Mordor just caught him by surprise, and he didn't properly set up his defenders. And now, oh, now he's suffering the consequences of doing so. So, yo, that's the tricky thing. You know, defending multiple spots on the battlefield is always very challenging. So you gotta, you gotta watch out for that. Uh, we got the Dragon Slayers, though, in the mix, though. Oh, the relentless artillery fire doing so much damage to this Dwarven defense. And this, just when I thought the battle was over, just when I thought the Dwarves were turning this one around, this one still has a lot of game left. Obviously, you know, we're still pretty much halfway through the battle. And uh, the Dwarves, oh, whoa, did you see that? Let's, let's see if we can recreate that. Oh, no. No, no, that looked kind of cool, so... Okay, whatever. I'm making you guys sick. All right, we got a couple orcs here. Uh, the Black Numenorians are charging in, just trying to cut down the Dwarven reinforcements. And look at the scenery back there. That is so awesome. Great Mount Graham. That's even how you pronounce it. Oh, more artillery fire coming in. Taking out the Volt Wardens, who are the secondary line of defense in case all things fail. They're going to be able to hold. They should probably fall back a little bit, little bit more. And get away. Oh my god. Another good hit in the Dwarven defense. There's not much you can do about that. Oh, oh it still hits some crossbows back here. And look at the bounce power. 56% of the um, Dwarves have been killed. 57%. Or actually, uh, I'm sorry. 64% of the attackers. 57% of the uh, defenders, the dwarves. So, uh, it's still pretty close. But look at this army. Just working their way through. Oh, God. Every time I see a fiery ball of justice, I get a little nervous for the dwarves. I really do. It, it kind of hurts me. It hurts my insides when I see the dwarves lose so many troops to uh, artillery fire. I'm sorry if I'm moving the camera around too much here. There we go. That's a good counter shot there. Taking out some of those those, um, those orcs. Uh, but it looks like we got the guards of Khazad Doom showing up as reinforcements. And what a showdown right here. This is just an epic brawl for the, the, the outer defense of that fortress. Alright, but I do want to go around to other parts of the battle, so let's not... Uh, Miss out at what's going on over here. The dwarves, oh god. The dwarves are actually pushing back the attackers over here. Uh, so I think the orcs, they need to, uh, they need more troops in there. What are they doing? Get those guys in there because they are losing and you do not want to lose that catapult. See, the balance of forces are evenly matched. And we have some Axemen of Erebor coming in from Miles and Davis. Oh, he's going. Look at this. He's going for the walls and he's going to take out the archers. Who are, okay, come on arch, okay. He's gonna go for the archers who are very strategically placed on the walls there. So that's a great move for the dwarves. I better see these orcs moving soon. They need more reinforcements. But it's still a really close battle, guys. Seems like everyone is sending in everything. So whoever wins this small battle, this small skirmish is probably going to win the entire battle. Oh, one of the catapults have been destroyed. You see, look what's going on here. The Orcs of the Misty Mountains, they're moving up their catapults super close so they can get a very easy shot on these uh, uh, guards of Khazad Doom. Oh, another good hit here. Look at it. You see the dust just fly up. That was a pretty good shot from the Dwarves taking out a decent amount of the Orcs. This catapult's kind of freaking out. They don't know what to do. And the guards of Khazad Doom, they are going to be a very tough unit to take out. But uh, maybe with the support of the trolls, they can break down that defense. They need more catapults firing. At this point, I think the uh, Mordor's catapults... Yeah, see, that's a risk they're going to have to take. They're going to have to risk friendly fire. They need to fire as much as possible to take out these guards of Khazad Doom. Because you're not going to defeat these guys in melee. The only way you're going to beat them is with artillery fire. Oh, and there goes another catapult destroyed by the Dwarven catapult. This is so intense, guys. Extremely intense. Here comes another volley. Let's see. Oh, more friendly fire, though. What a wasted shot. Ah, uh, man, that's really tragic for them. Uh, hopefully, in the future, they can get some better shots going on here. 
but again, that's the only way they're going to kill these guards of Cause of Doom. If they do not kill them right now, there's no way they're going to break through this Dwarven defense. More Dwarven artillery fire trying to take out the catapults. More guards of Cause of Doom holding back. The, I mean, they're just, they're slowly marching forward on a bunch of dead orc bodies. I mean, this is just a disgusting battle right here. And, oh, there's a massive break. A massive break from the goblin archers who are holding back that force. They're going to have to send up more infantry. And that's going to be it for Mordor. I mean, I think they've committed everyone. Is there some fighting going on here? Yes, the Black Numenorians are holding off. Actually, a ton of Black Numenorians. It looks like he committed all of his forces over here. Uh, they definitely they need to come back. They need to go to that main fight and support their, their main army. Uh, because they are getting just chopped into pieces by the guards of Khazad Doom. Come on, catapult. You gotta fire now. This is the best. Oh, some friendly fire coming in, though. Wiped out a bunch of the car the guards of Khazad Doom. Here we go. Come on. Get a good shot here. Just one good shot. Kill like 20 of them. Oh! Oh no, Mordor's general. He's dead on the battlefield. That's going to be huge for the dwarves. What a what a fight. Oh, come on, catapult. Come on. What are you doing? What are you doing, you trolls? The troll in the battlefield. They're not reloading. They do not have time for this. There we go. Now they're reloading. We've got the general now in the mix. So Paladin and Bob risking it all. For this fight. Alright, here we go. Ready? Oh, they're going for the general. They're going for the general. They took out a ton of his men, but they did miss the general. You can see the general in his red cape right here. He is now moving forward towards the front line, helping his troops defend this main defense. His main battle line. They're moving. Oh, are they moving back the catapult? This catapult is going to be so key to, to Mordor. And the balance of power. Look at this. 80% of the defenders killed 83%. So the attackers are, in a way, turning this around. They are turning this around. Uh, we got some Vault Wardens now headed over this way to try to hold back the Black Numenorians. And let's see what's going on at the main fight over here. Um, more, more goblins. Okay, finally, he committed in his reserves. But this is going to be it. Do the dwarves have enough? It looks like they cut down the guards of Khazad Doom. He is using fire arrows to try to break their, their morale. Oh, there we go. It looks like he switched back to standard shot. He's got archers in the back here. Firing. So a great, great battle going on there. Let's see what's going on on this side, though. Uh, it's it's every time we come back here. It looks like it's more and more in favor of the dwarves And uh, the catapult here getting too close to combat and they're they're now that yep They're now fighting in melee. They're trying to get them out of there. You can see that they're trying to move this catapult back But oh there goes that troll There's Mordor's uh, general's bodyguard the black Numenorians who failed their general and I think they defeated the Black Numenor, or the, they're just retreating from this, this area. Uh, but most of the dwarves have been killed over here. So this Black Numenorian flank might be pretty huge. So what? Oh, we got some troops, Black Numenorians going for the catapult over here, taking on some, uh, some forces here. We do have, oh, these guys are breaking. Okay, so I thought he was flanking around. Uh, but we do have a fight over here. For, I mean, this battle is all over the place. It's really dynamic. Uh, but this has been a pretty solid push by the Dwarves ever since he moved up the Iron Guard. Uh, he's doing a great job. He should be able to take out these Heavy Goblin Halberds. They're no match against the Dragon Slayers. So that's going to be the last of that force. And I got to say it. I, I have to say it at, at this point. I think the Dwarves are going to take this one. I think they're, they're stopping every single advance from Mordor and their allies. I mean, this is kind of important. Mordor might be able to win in this situation. I don't know. It's pretty even. It's saying that victory seems to be a uh, victory seems to be certain for these dwarves. 
and we'll see what's going on o over at other parts of the battle. Oh, now they're down to their, their catapult trolls and their archers. And that was one hell of a fight over here with lots of artillery, lots of archers, lots of, um, lots of just elite units going at it. And it's finally going to be decided. And I think, I think it's safe to say that the dwarves are going to be, uh, going to be taking this one. At least in this area. If you look at the balance of power, it's still pretty close. Still anyone's game. So what a great fight for this great mountain fortress. Are you still going to take care of these trolls though? I mean, I know they're, you know, catapult trolls, but they're still trolls. He's got his uh, archers in the mix. Here comes the Black Numenorians kind of flanking around here. They're going to be a real pain in the side for the dwarves because they're so good. Uh, but look at the just the, the chaos that went on in this battle. Tons of different areas where dwarves put their lives on the line. They sacrificed, they sacrificed their lives for the future of their people. see what's going on over at this side I'm sure this fight is almost over over here the goblins have to be really close to breaking it's only a matter of time and then over in the fortress that's not the fortress but there's the there's the massive break by uh, Mordor they're they're falling back the general is cheering leading his men charging into glory and then over at this side uh, we have the dwarves also being victorious. We actually have one of the generals. So both generals fighting in the front lines with their men. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is going to conclude today's battle. I think it's more than obvious to say that this is going to be a dwarven victory. And we will fast forward a little bit. We're just kind of watching the last stand of the orcs as their generals are fleeing for their lives, as most of the men are fleeing for their lives. And the dwarves, they're gonna, you know, they're gonna hold on to Mount Graham. They're gonna hold on to this dwarven safe haven. So excellent fight here, excellent scenario. Oh, the, the general, ta look at that, that is amazing. Okay, so the dwarven general takes out the orc general you don't see that too often. You do not see that too often. So that was really cool. Really, really cool. Hopefully he doesn't die here. Uh, but I'm pretty sure that was the last general of the attacking side. Both Dwarven generals are going to survive this one. And I hope, I hope most of you guys didn't like skim past that. Because that was such an amazing moment in Third Age Total War. And I'm glad that happened. Um, glad I didn't fast forward through it. <laughs> I'm glad there's a cutscene. The goblins, look at them, just slowly backing up against these dragon slayers. The balance of forces are actually pretty close here. Uh, but it, again, it doesn't matter who wins this one because the dwarves are going to show up here as reinforcements. And look at the victorious dwarves march back in into their fortress here. And they're going to head over to the other side of the fight and take care of what's left. And I'm going to go ahead and fast forward through the end results. I think it really, at this point, it's just them running down very depleted troops. So we're not really missing much All here. All right, guys. So here we are at the end results. And look at this. Even kills for the dwarves. Both of them doing an excellent job. Uh, Miles and Davis kind of struggling there at the beginning. But he turned it around at the gate. And he did not break at this choke point. And then at the attacking side, not that bad. Really not considering like how good the dwarven force was uh 2000 kills by the mordor player so he did a good job there with the black numenorians and whatnot uh i i think that i don't know i really it's i can't really say that the attackers made any major mistakes i think they should have sent more troops over to take this flanking area so they could have fired down at the uh, troops defending the fortress they really should have took this area over here it's kind of hard to see with this big average victory screen right here uh, let's go ahead and look at the the kills here i'm just gonna fly through this so you guys 439 the dragon slayers oh my goodness 403 
the Iron, Cr Iron Crosswoman. And then here are the kills for the next Dwarven player. So there you have it, guys. That's going to conclude today's battle. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, be sure to leave a like, a comment, share, and subscribe if you haven't. So thank you once again, and I will see you next time.